Hi everyone, this is Krishna from Informatica and I'm going to show you how to configure uh, Linux to get proper core files when a process crashes. The agenda is to go through the checklist of items. Uh, we have three items uh, uh, that could uh, help to configure getting the right core file. The first configuration to see is the ULimit. The ULimit core file size uh, governs what should be the maximum size of the core file. Uh, Best practices for uh, debugging demands that uh, this value should be set to unlimited so that you get proper full core files. Uh, there are two limits that we need to look at. The hard limit that a system admins would use to enforce system wide conditions. Uh, a soft limit that a user himself can set uh, to protect his processors from abusing system resources. Uh, both these properties should be set to unlimited if the file is zero. A no core file should be generated. If the value is finite but not unlimited, uh, the core file has might be truncated. There could be chances that you have an incomplete file. Uh, by default, uh, the fresh installation of Linux has core uh, file size limit set to zero, which means that you, know, as a part of preparing the system, you might need to uh, set the uh, limits to unlimited. Let's take a look at uh, how the U limits can be verified. Uh, the command is U limit minus A. Uh, this shows all the limits, and uh, we need to look in specific for core file size. As you see here, the value is set to unlimited. To this shows the hard limit dash A and uppercase H, and the same value should be in unlimited. If you have a fine, if you have a, 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 a soft limit, as you see here, can never go higher than the hard limit. Alright, so the second property that we need to look at is a Linux kernel property, it's called core underscore pattern and uh, this can be used to change the directory where the core file is generated. You can also set a pattern for the core file name uh, with which the file is getting generated. Now, as mentioned here, if you change the directory, then uh, uh, this uh, we need to make sure that the directory the has write permissions for all the processes that are going to generate core files there and uh, you might also want to verify that there is enough disk space for uh, uh, holding the core files that are to be generated. Let's take a quick look on how to look at the values. Uh, this command uh, shows you how to check the value uh, of the core pattern. So as you can he see here, the value is set to slash back cores core dot percentage p, so which means that the core file of any process in the system will be generated on the slash back cores, and uh, the file name would be core dot pid, the pid is affixed to the process. Now to test uh, if a a uh, process can actually generate core in this directory. I have here a user I infi ADM, admi INFI admin uh, whose process I'm going to artificially kill and verify if core file is generated in this directory. So what I'm going to do is launch a turbo shell, turbo C shell here and I'm going to kill this process in a way that it will generate the core file. So here I'm, I'm artificially uh, emulating a uh, segmentation fault within this special process. As you can see, see here, the process has actually hit a segmentation fault. Let's verify if there is any code file in this directory. Now, there are no files. And if you look at the permissions, the permission says there are no write permission for any user other than root. Uh, as you can see here, I'm logged in as uh, inside admin so so this user apparently doesn't have right permissions this directory probably the reason why no code file is generated let's go and change the permissions to this directory now every user can actually generate a file here we can do by touch that course and test yes uh, this user is able to create files in this directory. Now let's do repeat the same step, launch a C shell, 
get the PID which is 2933 and uh, simulate the segmentation fault. Ah, wow! Now you can see here the segmentation fault and it actually says the score file has been done. Let's look at this directory and here we have the code file with the process ID suffixed as specified in the pattern. Now let's let's look at the third property which is score user speed. So typically when you have core files getting generated, uh, we want to make sure uh, one core file doesn't replace the core file. So the core files better have unique names. Uh, this property is actually a mechanism to say that you know always suffix the PID to the core file so that you have increased chances of getting a unique uh, core file name so that one you don't lose one because uh, the latest one replaced. Um, uh, the default value is good because it says the value is 1. Uh, you can check using the same command. Here we at the same uh, configuration sqtl a grep code user speed. And here you see the code user speed are the value set to 1. So, which means that any core file will actually have the PID attached by default. Now let's also see what's the pattern. On the same machine, I have actually changed the code file pattern uh, to uh, make sure there is no percentage P or the PID attached. So the pattern says it's slash var slash code slash the score. Now let's repeat the steps. I'm going to launch the turbo special, get the PID, and then fill the process in a way that the code file is done. Now the code file is done. Let's check this directory here. And there you go. We have a core file generated with the PID attached with just the core file pattern containing core. And that's because the core user speed property is being set. If this is set to zero, then when you generate a core file, the file name will just be core and no PID is attached. So this helps creating unique core files and preserving core files for a post mortem even after a bit of time. Uh, you can find all these details in this listed KB number. Uh, you can visit the Informatica support portal and access this KB to get to get the list of commands. Uh, we would love to hear from you. You can provide feedback uh, through uh, email to supportvideos at informatica.com or on the Twitter channel. Thank you very much.